said, I'm Laurie Thomas, and I'm with the University of Kentucky Forestry and Natural Resources Extension, and I'm glad to be here today. I love talking about tree ID, and so today we're going to talk about the maples of Kentucky and some of the tips for identification. So quickly, the maples of Kentucky, we have six um, native maples. We have others that are planted, but six native maples. We have sugar maple, red maple, box elder, silver maple, black maple, and striped maple. And so we're going to talk about each one of those and some of their identifying characteristics. But I kind of want to talk a little bit real quick, throw out some maple statistics, because some of these are more prevalent in our state than others. Some of these species are. We look at sugar maple, which is um, the, the, the most important tree for, in, um, for maple syrup production. It's found in, and I should preface, this data is collected from the 2017 United States Forest Service forest inventory analysis. And these, this data is based on one randomly located plot for 6,000 acres. And so this is done all across the state. But sugar maple is found in 118 counties for a total number of stems. This is all size classes from teeny tiny seedlings all the way up to 25 inches and greater, over 700 million stems. But when we look at what's important in the range for what we can tap and actually get sap from, a total estimate number of trees that are nine inches and greater, there's over 54 million maple, uh, sugar maple trees in the state. And then next, and we're just going to talk about the main ones, but red maple um, is also very prevalent in this state. It's found in 98 counties. And in fact, if we go over here to the total number of trees per, um, in the state, all size classes, we have over 8 hundred million red maples in the state. It is the most numerous tree that we find in Kentucky. And we have, but the estimated number of trees that are nine inches and greater are only 50 million. And then we have box elder down here, a pretty prominent tree. We find it in 90 counties. Um, and I will say these trees are also found in some of the states that are surrounding us. If some of you all are um, not in Kentucky and we'll see range maps here in just a minute. But box elder, much less numerous at only 76 million total stems and only about 6 million um, trees that are nine inches or greater. And then silver maple, 29 counties, uh, we have much fewer stems. And then lastly, I just mentioned these last two, black maple and striped maple, very um, much less frequent in the state. Black maple is only found in six counties and only 297,000 stems that are greater than nine inches in diameter. I will say this black maple most closely resembles sugar maple in all things and um, the way it looks and its sugar content. And then striped maple is only found in one county and don't even have any trees that are greater than nine inches in diameter. So just some quick idea of how much um, how the maples that we have in the state and how numerous they are. So let's talk about some quick identification tips. So for maples, um, one of the things to look at are the leaves. And right now, obviously we can't do that, but um, maples have lobed leaves and those lobes can vary in number. So like this one's got five and the lobe is the part that sticks out as I'm pointing to right here. So this one's got five, one, two, three, four, five. And then the sinuses of those leaves, that's what's between the lobe, that indentation. Those will vary depending on the species. So like for this one, it's got a rounded lobe and um, a rounded sinus and five lobes. And this guy right here's got, um, it's got a, a much shallower pointed sinus and it really has one, two, three, maybe five lobes, but really we might call this a three lobed um, tree with, and different margins. The exception to this is our box elder. This is our only maple that has a compound leaf. And you'll notice it also looks like poison ivy. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about box elder. Another good identification technique um, tip is that maples have oppositely arranged buds and leaves. And you can see in the circle right here, you've got your leaf petiole, and these leaf petioles are opposite from one another, and you can even see the buds. So if we don't, you don't have leaves, you can still look at buds to verify that you're looking at maybe a maple if it has oppositely arranged buds. So you've got these opposite buds and then the opposite leaves. And in Kentucky, we only have four groups of trees that have oppositely arranged leaves and buds. And those are maple, ashes, dogwood, and buckeye. So if you can remember the mnemonic mad buck, you can remember the groups of trees that have oppositely arranged leaves and buds. 
So, and like I said, the leaves are gonna look different on these other trees. So if you've got this lobed leaf um, and it's oppositely arranged, you've probably got a maple. And then the last really good identification tip is the fruit of maples. Maples have a, what's called a double Samara, um, which is a winged seed. And you can see this is the seed with this little wing or down here on this sugar maple, this is the seed. And then you've got that wing and they are paired. So this species has paired double Samaras, whereas ashes have Samaras, but they only have, they're in singles, they're not paired. And these are these Samaras are important because um, the wing seeds, because that's how maple seeds are dispersed. They are dispersed by wind and those wings help them be carried farther away. Um, I'll, and also you all might remember if you were kids, you pull these apart, throw them up in the air and they come twirling down like the little whirly birds. Um, this can also be helpful looking at the Samaras because based on, depending on the species, they ripen at different times of the year. So that can be another good identification tip. So let's jump into our maples. Sugar maple, like I said, the most important um, in maple syrup production. It has the highest content of sugar in the sap. Um, it is found, it's really a northeastern species, but it does dip down into Kentucky and Tennessee. And as we saw, it's quite numerous in the state. It's a relatively large tree, um, can grow up to about 100, 100 to 120 feet tall and up to three feet in diameter. It grows relatively slow and it can live to be about three to 400 years old and it's very shade tolerant so it can grow under other trees um, and it's typically found in your moist well-drained soils the rich sites in a forested setting it's going to be on the lower part of that slope not all the way up at the ridge top but also not down right there next to the stream so let's look at the leaves. Maple leaves have palmately veined leaves and that means that all the veins originate from that stem. And you can see the leaf petiole right here and all those veins originate from there and that's kind of palmate shaped. So for sugar maple, they have five lobes, one, two, three, four, five, and rounded sinuses. You can see it looks like a thumb's been pushed into that, a nice rounded sinus. And the margins on these leaves are entire. They don't have little teeth on them or serrations as we call it. In the summer, they're a lovely green and they'll be a little paler below, but still kind of a light green and fall color is spectacular. These are just phenomenal trees in the fall. Colors range from red and oranges and golds, just a beautiful tree. And it's also used quite a bit as a landscape tree for that reason. Just wanted to show you the flowers, probably wouldn't notice them very often, but they appear with or slightly before the leaves. And on sugar maple, they're on these long slender stems. The fruit, remember we talked about the fruit. So uh, sugar maple, they're a pretty good size, about a one inch um, long Samara and they're horseshoe shaped, a nice horseshoe shape. And they'll be green when they're not ripe and they ripen in the fall. They mature in the fall and they're brown when they ripen. So remember that sugar maple ripen, their seeds ripen in the fall. We won't see that with all the species. And on the twigs, so it's winter time, you don't have leaves and you're out looking around. Um, you want to you notice you've got opposite buds. If you can see, it's not the best picture here, but it's a brown slender twig. Our buds are opposite. We've got little lenticels. Those are those little white dots on there. And those are for gas exchange. And you'll notice the buds of sugar maple are very pointed. They're sharply pointed. Even the terminal buds are up here. Those are the ones at the end of the twig versus the ones even on the sides, their lateral buds, those are sharply pointed as well. So brown and slender with pointed buds for sugar maple. The bark is smooth and, and gray on the younger trees and it starts developing ridges and furrows and, and irregular vertical plates with those ridges curling out as that tree ages. And so this is a young tree up top with an older tree down here and you can see how that bark varies as the tree ages. Okay, red maple. Remember the most numerous tree in the state big, big range. It's all the way up from Maine, all the way down to Florida, over into Texas. Um, red maple isn't super picky about where it grows. It can grow all the way down at the bottom of the slope up to the top of the slope, which accounts for it being as numerous as it is. One of the reasons is that it's as numerous as it is in the state. And the forest, it'll tend to have a nice, clear, straight, relatively clear bowl. Um, it's a 
can grow pretty large. It's not maybe quite as large as sugar maple, but up to 100 feet. Um, it is a fast growing tree and it has very relatively soft wood. That's why we also call it soft maple. Um, and in the open grown setting, it tends to have a much shorter trunk with a rounded, attractive canopy, which is why it's used a lot in landscaping. One, because it grows fast and because it's attractive as well. Now the sugar content in red maple is less than what you're going to find in um, sugar maple, so it takes more sap to actually make maple syrup from that, and it tends to, the buds tend to swell earlier on red maple as opposed to sugar maple, so you've got a shorter period of time to tap the tree. So let's look at the leaf. Um, and on red maple, they tend to have three pointed lobes. Um, sometimes you'll find them with five, but this one, nice example, three pointed lobes with serrated margins. You'll notice how it's got those teeth um, or those serrations like a knife along the edge of that leaf. And the sinuses, those indentations are V-shaped as opposed to being round like on this sugar maple. They are green in the summer and their underside is actually almost kind of a whitish color. So it's very easy to tell, you know, the underside from the top side of that. And the fall color varies from yellowish to reddish. And again, and this is a widely used landscape tree for those great fall colors. The flowers are different. You notice they're not on those long stems. And these, you might notice these flowers because they are red. They kind of stand out. And the flowers bloom well before the leaves come out. I mean, it's a very early bloomer, one of the first, but not the first to flower in the spring, but lovely um, clusters of red flowers. The Samara is also different. It's much smaller than what we saw with the sugar maple. It's a half inch to three fourths inch long. And it's usually kind of a reddish or brown. And it has, it's kind of V-shaped instead of being horseshoe shaped. And these ripen in late spring and early summer. Remember, um, sugar maple ripened in the fall. So these are early ripening seeds. The twig is also red um, and it's got so the red and kind of shiny again has the lenticels on it, but the buds are not sharp and pointed they're much more blunt and rounded, as you can see in this one you can see clearly how nice and opposite you can see how um, how those are opposite. The bark again is smooth and gray on those younger trees and becomes darker and breaks into long scaly patches plates as that tree ages so the bark doesn't look quite the same as um, sugar maple. Okay, Acer Nugundo box elder. So this is the maple that has the, the largest range of maples in North America. You can see it grows all across um, Eastern North America. We've even got um, some ranging down into Central and Central America and all the way over into um, California. This is a bottomland species. It's gonna grow along your stream banks. It likes to have its feet wet, deals well, deals well with those kinds of soils. Tinstad doesn't have the best growth form as you can see in this picture here, lots of trunks sprouting. Um, and lots of times you'll see it in multiple stems. You can tap box elder um, and does have, you know, obviously has sugar content, but from what I've read, I've never tasted it, the sap, and makes a syrup that tastes more like sorghum. It doesn't taste like a maple syrup sap. Um, so, but this is one, another a maple tree. This is the one that has the compound leaves and it's our only maple with the compound leaf. And so this whole thing right here is a leaf and it's made up of, this one's made up of three leaflets, one, two, three. Sometimes you'll find box elder with five leaflets and even occasionally seven leaflets. And those leaflets will tend to have um, coarsely serrated margins. And the fall color is not super spectacular yellow. It's not a, a great like landscaping showy tree. And sometimes it's confused with poison ivy, especially when it's in, it's got three leaflets. And before you don't go touching things with three leaves, look, use your eyes before your hands, but look closely at the leaves and you'll notice on box elder that that terminal leaflet, which is the one on the top, it has a much longer petiole, which is the leaf stem right there, than you see with the poison ivy. The poison ivy, they're all almost connected right there. But again, always look closely before you touch something with three leaves. Now, wanted to point out this species is dioecious. The other maples that we've mentioned, um, sugar and red maple are monoecious, which means a tree will have both male and female flowers on the same tree. Box elder is not that way. It is dioecious. Dioecious means two houses, which means there are male trees and this is the male flower. And then there are female trees and this is the female flower. Their um, flowers appear with the leaves in the spring. So they don't bud out quite as early as our red maple does.
the Samaras on, um, they're about one, one and a half inches long, about the same size as uh, sugar maple, but they're more of a V shape. They can be a wide spreading V or it can be a narrower V as you see in these mature ones that and when they mature, they turn tan. And this one matures in the fall like sugar maple does as well. And even their Samaras can persist through the winter on the, on the tree. The twig is a lot different too. It's a much stouter twig because it's got a compound leaf. So you need a little bit stouter twig to hold that leaf. They tend to be green to a purplish color and they'll be covered in this glaucous bloom, which is this white coloration on there. And their buds will be round and much more stubby. And a lot of times they're furry or fuzzy covered in a pubescence. And then the bark looks very different too. On our younger trees, it tends to be thin gray, even maybe a little green and it's got warts all over it. And as the tree ages, that bark's going to develop shallow interlacing ridges, and it'll actually be kind of light in color. And you can see on this, here's a multiple stem. There's three stems, three trunks on that box elder. All right, silver maple. Silver maple we saw wasn't quite as numerous in our state, but you notice that the range is all across the eastern United States. Um, it is a bottomland species as well. It grows along those stream corridors. Um, it's also was used, it's not used as much, but was widely used in urban landscape plantings because it tolerates compacted soils and it's a fast grower. It grows really quickly. Unfortunately, it, the wood is weak, so it breaks very easily and the roots are known for seeking out water sources because it's also called water maple and it can be hard on water lines around your house. Um, the sugar content on um, silver maple would be comparable to what we find with red maple. It's a lower sugar content, so therefore you need more sap to, to make syrup out of that. And it blooms very early, so you get a much shorter tapping period. Okay, so let's look at the leaves. We've got five lobes, one, five pointed lobes, one, two, three, four, five. And it has very, very deep, um, deep sinuses here with very coarsely serrated leaves. They'll be light green above and they're pale, almost silvery below. So like when the wind blows both this and red maple, you actually see that white underside of those leaves. Fall color, not super spectacular. It's kind of yellow. It's not a super showy tree for fall color. The flowers look much like red maple. They're in clusters, they're red. Um, and these are the first of the maples to flower. So these bud out very early, which is why there's a short tapping season on these. This is the fruit, again, is a V-shaped Samara, and it is the largest of the maple Samaras. It's about two and a half inches long, and these mature in the spring, just like our red maple does. And you can see they turn tan right there when they mature in the spring. The twig, very similar to um, red maple, it's red, but it's going to be stouter. Um, it has the round kind of blunt buds, and when you crush the twig, it has an unpleasant odor. The bark looks kind of similar to red maple too, nice and smooth on the younger stems, this one here in the foreground, and then when um, breaks up into long thin strips as it ages and it gets loose at the ends, even as that tree gets older, you can see it's actually peeling away. Looks much like red maple, but maybe even a little coarser. And the last two I just wanted to mention, they weren't very numerous in our state, is black maple. It has a very similar range to sugar maple, but not quite as numerous, um, even throughout its entire range. In all aspects, this tree is very similar to black, uh, very similar to um, sugar maple. The sugar content is equivalent to what you find in sugar maple, just it's so much less numerous in our, in our forest. Um, its leaves are have three lobes as opposed to five, but it does have entire margins with rounded sinuses and the leaf looks like it's wilted it kind of droops so it does look a little different from sugar maple the uh, the bud looks very similar it's brown and slender with that pointed um terminal bud but it tends to have a little fuzz on that it's uh samara looks very similar it's horseshoe shaped turns brown and it ripens in the fall as well and then last, I just wanted to mention striped maple because it's just kind of a unique little tree. It's only found in Harlan County, as you can see in its range. It um, ranges all through the Northeast and down the Appalachian Mountains. And you've got one little pocket of it there in um, Eastern Kentucky. Uh, the leaf of this is a three lobed one and it looks like a goose's foot. So if you ever see that out, if you're in Harlan County um, or you go to a planting someplace, the bark is what's most striking about striped maple. It does have striped bark, these white stripes 
in that bark when it's young all the way up to when it's old. It's green when it's young and it turns kind of reddish as it ages. Its bud is also very different from the other maples. It has a, its terminal bud, looks very much like a yellow poplar bud. It's got a valvate um, bud scales, which looks like a duck's bill, like there's one scale on each side and it's reddish as well. And its fruit's gonna ripen in late summer to fall as well. I say, okay, so some quick maple comparisons. Um, that just to, just to remember, sugar maple, when we're looking, well, looking at the leaves, sugar maple has five lobes, entire sinuses, entire margins with rounded sinuses. Red maple, three lobes usually, and it has serrated margins and V-shaped shallow sinuses. Um, silver maple, it has five lobes, but serrated margins, V-shaped, very deep sinuses on that leaf. Box elder, enough said, it's compound leaf. Black maple, don't see a lot of it, but three-lobed, entire margin, shallow sinuses, wilted look. Striped maple, three lobes, it looks like a goose's foot. So when we look at our Samaras, really think about when you see them. Um, sugar maple ripens in the fall. Red maple, those are going to ripen in spring and early summer. Silver maple, again, ripening in spring. Both of these bloom out early. Box elder ripens in the fall. Black maple ripens in the fall. And striped maple ripens in late summer, early fall. Then when we compare our buds, um, for sugar maple and black maple look very similar. They're brown, slender, and they have sharp pointed buds. Red maple and silver maple look very similar in that they're red and they have rounded, more blunt buds. And then box elder, completely different. It's going to be reddish to purplish, and it's got round kind of fuzzy buds on that twig. And our striped maple, again, if you run across it, it's going to have a very different looking. The bud, like I said, looks much like a yellow poplar with those valvate bud scales. Okay, just to wrap it up here. Some identification and information resources you might find useful. If you decide you want to try to identify some of the trees on your property, um, I suggest these two little um, tree finder guides. These are pocket size. You can get them off Amazon.com, about $5 a piece. And these are dichotomous keys. So they ask you sets of questions about the, the species that you're looking at and walk you through this key to help you narrow down um, to the species that you're looking at. The winter tree finder is for when your tree doesn't have leaves. And then the tree finder is for when you do have leaves on the tree. If you're gonna use these and haven't, I would start with the tree finder first. It's always easier to start identification with the leaves, but like right now we don't have the leaves. So you can check out both of those. Like I said, you can get them at Amazon for five bucks or so a piece. Now, if you'd like to learn how to use these tree finders, we have previously recorded tree ID webinars up on our Forestry Natural Resources website. And these will talk about both of these webinars are a little different, but they both talk about looking at leaf characteristics and then how to walk you through step by step how to use these tree finders to identify trees. And then if you're just interested in trees in general, We've been putting together videos over the past um, year. We've got about 49 of those on common trees of Kentucky. They're five to six minutes long and they walk you through, it, each video is one tree and it's gonna walk you through where that tree grows and um, what's its best habitat, all the identification characteristics, including natural history and some fun facts about those trees. So you can check those out as well at our Forestry Natural Resources website as well. So I hope you enjoyed today. Got It was a quick share with um, um, how to identify our maple trees in Kentucky, and I'll start share. And um, good luck out there, and thanks for having me today. Appreciate it.